everyone, it's Lou Collins. Welcome to another of the Mixed Media Techniques. So I'm going to be showing you another base background technique, something to create texture, dimension and colour. This is one of the last of these sorts of techniques. We've already built up a huge, I mean, a plethora of different um, effects that you can achieve. Hopefully you've played along with a lot of these and created your own tag library too. We're soon going to be starting work on putting these together to create actual layouts for art journals, for scrapbook pages and so on. So join me if you haven't done already. I'll make sure the playlist is linked just up here and you can work through all of these techniques with us. And of course, there's a Facebook group. You can also join. That's in the description. Now, today we're going to be working with mirror card. So this is a gold mirror card and we're going to be creating a really fun technique. I'm going to be working with an embossing folder. I've chosen to use this one. This is from my textures opulence range. All of my textures items you'll find linked down below as well because you can only get them exclusively at craft stash. So I'm going to put this mirror card into my folder. Now at the moment this mirror card is single sided so you need to decide looking at your folder which of the design so whether you want the background or the foreground the actual pattern to be raised up when you, on your finished project. This isn't just for this technique this is for any embossing that you do. Just be aware that you do actually have the choice of two different options when you're embossing. So I'm going to go ahead and have the actual swirls, um, the foreground as such, the pattern raised up. So I'm going to put this in the um, embossing folder, I suppose, in the correct way round. And I've just cut this so that it's going to fit nicely on the front of my tag rather than working on my tag itself. Now each die cutting machine is different, so have a play around with your sandwiches and your different plate combinations to see which gives you the best pressure for the embossing folder that you're using and of course the cardstock and your machine pressure will vary as well. So for me with the big shot I like to use the black rubber mat on top of the teal plastic plate, then my embossing folder and then just one of the clear plates. So I've actually taken out one of the clear plates there. And I'm going to run this through. Now you should get a little bit of cracking. Not too much. I mean, sometimes too much can mean a problem, but um, some cracking is absolutely fine. So let's take a look at that. That's absolutely perfect. When I say perfect with embossing, and again, this is not just for this technique. This is for any pressure embossing, embossing folders. Um, what you're looking for is a really nice, deep and even emboss across the entire image, edge to edge. But what you don't want is any of those edges cracking to reveal the back of the cardstock peeking through. So take a look on both sides and if that's all still intact but you've got a beautiful even embossed then you're good to go. Now this next stage is where it can get a little bit mucky so I'm placing a clear mat underneath on my desk so that I don't get my desk messy and I've got lots of kitchen towel to hand. So for this I'm going to actually mask off my um, fo foiled or mirror card here, my embossed mirror card, just so that I can show you two different ways of doing this technique. So let's work on the right hand side first. And for this, I'm going to use paint. Paint is my preference for this technique. A black acrylic paint is perfect. You want something that ideally is water-based, but will dry on the mirror card. So most watercolors, for example, just we, they won't dry, or they'll take a very, very long time to for the liquid to evaporate and for you to be left with the pigment on the surface. Acrylic paint will dry. Now it will also scratch off over time, but if you're happy with that, then that's kind of a distressed look. And usually your craft projects aren't actually handled all that much, so that won't matter. So giving my acrylic paint a really good shake, first of all, and to apply this, I've got a really soft brush here. So I'm going to put more paint on than I need. Okay, and this is kind of part of the process. So I'm going to brush this paint all over the mirror card, and I mean all over. So in all the nooks and crannies, this is why we have a soft brush, just to get into all the debossed areas there, like so. Perfect, okay, so once that's done, you can clean your brush up. And we're going to give that a few minutes, first of all, to air dry. Now, if the temperature in your room is really warm, this might take not even a few minutes. Um, obviously, if it's cooler and you've got quite moist air, then, of course, that could take a lot longer. But what you're looking for is the some of the areas to start going matte. You can, of course, take your heat gun to this. 
be aware that the foiled cardstock, the mirror cardstock, could potentially bubble under extreme heat. So as always, all you really want to do is be warming up the air around it. Hopefully you can see there we've actually got some matte areas now starting to appear. That's the perfect time to start doing the next step. So I'm going to take a piece of kitchen towel and just spritz it with some water. We don't want it dripping wet, but certainly damp. And we're going to brush over the surface, starting to remove some of the paint. Now, obviously, any paint that is still very wet will come off very easily. And I tend to fold that in half and then go again because you're going to get a lot of paint coming off initially. And what you're mostly working on is the raised areas here. So just back and forth in all the directions. But don't worry if you are actually capturing some of the background because all we're looking for is a little bit of black left over. So it's up to you now if you think your paint is really dry you might want to add more moisture to your tissue but if you think that actually that's coming off really easily then just keep going with the dry tissue and I don't like to leave too many really solid black areas what I like to leave is just a little bit inside the detail around the edge of the detail there. So that's the technique with black paint. I'm going to do the same with stays on. Now stays on is a faster application, um, but for the, with this one, it is harder to get the ink off. It's not quite the same effect, but it is ideal if you don't have the acrylic paint. So I'm going to ensure this side is completely dry. I'm going to switch my tape over and do the same with the ink. So for this one, I'm going to take the protective cover off of the ink pad and just brush into the detail there. Now it's a little bit harder because the pad on the stays on ink pad isn't, um, it doesn't have a lot of give, it's quite flat. So you do really need to press a bit more with this and this is the reason we used the soft brush with the paint to get into the detail. But immediately I'm going to come and buff away the excess ink from the surface using a flat kitchen towel working in circles so this is a less distressed look really um, because you're working very very quickly as the ink dries and as you'll probably see there let's take a close-up look at that again we've captured just the edge of the design there we've taken it off of the surface the raised areas and also any large areas that are debossed as well but we've got this beautiful sort of highlight or low light shadows around the detail it's so pretty it really does look like aged metal but if i remove this tape here you're easily going to be able to see the difference between the two now the side that i've used the stays on on that's also tinted the mirror card a little giving it a slight dull finish a slightly gray tinge to it whereas the mirror card on the painted side has remained really quite bright yellow and as glossy as it was before but of course the black is much more distressed so there's my aged metallic panel glued to my tag ready to put into my Technique Tags collection. I'll put all the details in the description for joining the Facebook group and for where you can find a playlist to go back and see all of the other Technique videos. I hope you enjoyed this everybody. Let me know in the comments whether you've tried it or are going to try it and I hope to see you again very soon. Take care.